Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon. Hello again, YouTube. It's Reb. Welcome back to Redraw with Reb, or Reb Redraw. I don't remember what we called it. Today, I'm redrawing the Sailor Moon Redraw that started a couple years ago that everyone started doing. I'm redrawing my first one because boy howdy I needed it. Before we get started, I gotta do my spiel, so hop on over to the next timestamp to get right into the art. Thank you! I want to say thank you so much for the support on the last video. I love making silly content for Secret Sleepover Society and the Drawfee community, and I am planning to do more, so let me know if there's anything you'd want to see. And by the way, I have a subscription tier on Ko-fi that gets you a shout out at the end of every video. There's a lot of cool stuff over there like sneak peeks, wallpapers, doodles, and more. Here's a look at this month's wallpaper. Wow, what a coincidence! That wallpaper is free for members of the liftoff tier or higher. It would mean a lot to me if you went over there and checked it out. The minimum shoutout is like $3 a month, and you'd be supporting me directly. If you can't do that, you can subscribe for free. That's it. Uh, stay till the end of the video to be cool. I dare you. Okay, so the first piece. I want to talk about what worked and what didn't. So I was very into dramatic lighting at this time, but I didn't know how to... I guess regulate it. A lot of my art ended up blown out and I went overboard with some of the lighting because I, I was having fun and that's fair. I think at this point in my art process I was not as concise as I am now in my decision making. I was a wee little baby still going through school and I didn't have the time to practice like I do now. With the first piece I also didn't know where my style was. I was definitely focused on art style specifically as an element of my art, like I treated it like an identity, I think that hindered me a little bit. I was so like self-conscious about where I wanted the piece to go and, and what boxes I wanted it to check. I wanted it to be a pretty lady, I wanted it to be glowy and effervescent or whatever, and I wanted it to look anime but also realistic. Uh, I wanted it to be like XYZ, I, I didn't know how to really nail down what I wanted in my art because I had all these goals and I had all these ideas and I was I, I was self-conscious about my art style and how it looked to other people. I was definitely getting better at anatomy in some ways, um, especially portraits and like facial features at the time. I really found my love for drawing portraits. I, I think though my focus on anatomy was kind of a detriment in the first one, not gonna lie. Yeah, you know. I will say the piece does look really pretty, and I've had people tell me that the original still looks really nice. And I think so too, I just think that it's a different flavor than what I would draw now, and that's okay. <laughs> we are our own worst critic, you know? I feel like the original was definitely one of those situations where I had the vision for the piece in mind, but I didn't have the skills to execute it. And now that I went back and worked on it, I think I did have the skills to at least get somewhere in the realm of what I was going for. So when I started this redraw, I was very burnt out. We were headed into the holidays and I just wanted to have fun. I realized that the best way to have fun with this redraw was to really pull it back, like reel it in. I didn't want to have to go above and beyond with it it's because the original I think I did too much. It got kind of visually muddy, it got blurry, um, I was trying to put all the eggs in one basket and oh no, that's too many eggs. So I wanted to practice my restraint and some select decision making, but I didn't want it to become a chore, I wanted it to remain fun. I gave myself the freedom to relax about it. It really took me a while to figure out how I wanted it to look. I think this was because I was burnt out. Um, and I, I couldn't find my art bones. I didn't know, uh, my identity, I guess, at this time. I felt a little bit lost. I didn't know what people wanted to see from me, which is in itself, that that's a self-esteem issue. You gotta work on that, Reb. But in a different way this year, I've been realizing, in a positive way, that my art style is super adaptable and I have a lot of range. I can basically draw in any art style I want to if I try or if I practice at it, which is really cool. Um, but it does come with challenges. It, it, it makes it hard to kind of, okay, what's the vibe? What, what's this? What's the vibe for today? You know? And I think the vibe for this piece ended up being more of a classic anime with the, a stylistic flavor 
I don't know, like, the style... The style was the seasoning, it was not the main course. And this is something that I'm just realizing as I'm recording this video, that that's a very important thing to consider while you're doing art, is that your style is not the main dish. Don't just dump the paprika into the bowl. That's too much paprika. You need food there. You can't just eat the- you can't eat the oregano. Put the- put the oregano down. Drop it. Drop the oregano. But yeah, anyway, I wanted it to look like a- an anime screen grab. I wanted it to look like it could have been pulled out of a 90s anime. Or like a cinematic or something. Uh, more so than the original did. I wanted it to be recognizable, obviously, as Sailor Moon, but I wanted it to have that flavor of Oh, this could be real. I just- I just put a little spice on it. When it felt natural, I just- it just, just, just- Woo! Throw it in there. Throw in the spice. Mmm, yum. And ultimately, that's what made this piece so successful. Spices. Seasoning. I keep kicking my chair! As I was working on this piece, I did have a hard time figuring out what expression I wanted it to have. But once I nailed it down, I did feel really strongly about it. I felt really confident in my expression-making ability which I've been working on. I love when an expression really shows how like in pain or like how much thinking is happening. I want the expressions to be able to show what's, what is going on in, in, in that brain. Is it nothing or is it a whole lot? I also noticed while working on this that I love cinematic art and it kind of gave me a direction for the piece to make it feel more like a movie or screenshots. Um, and in my art in general, I've been doing a lot of those recently. Artists with really cool compositions that remind me of film are very inspiring to me, so I've been looking at a lot of their art. I think something that I haven't been doing for most of my art career is looking at art composition specifically. Especially as somebody who studied scenic design for theater, you don't really look at composition too much. Not saying you don't. Your main focus is more of like the framing on the stage and the limitations obviously of the budget um, and the labor that goes into making a set. Uh, especially with like fringe theater where you can't afford to do a perspective every single time. You can play with perspective, you can play with the framing, uh, but you can't control the camera angle like you can in a, in a piece of art. You can fake it, but you can't control it. You can definitely design things based off of cinema to give it a more dramatic feeling, but it's definitely much more limited than illustrating something with the intent of making it look like film. This may not look like a ton of growth in a linear manner, but I feel like I showed my ability to make decisions um, and make strong decisions, not in-between decisions. I feel like I really was able to show my knowledge and my my, my craft. My craft. <laughs> my craft. It showed, it shows like the growth and the maturity that I have with my art that I didn't have before. Um, and I think that's cool. I think that's neat. I just think that's neat. Yeah. So as for the process, once I got the sketch to a place that I felt happy with, I started to redraw the sketch, hoping to keep the energy the same. We, you know that I redraw sketches a lot. I, I, I made a new sketch layer on top of it, hoping to keep the same energy from the first one, just to like clean it up a little bit. Um, obviously in the art from the show, the lines are very clean, but they have a very natural feel to them, and I wanted to be able to translate that with my sketchy line art style without losing the energy of the sketch. You know. You know you know how it go. You know how it go. I was also trying to figure out how this would be rendered, since the first one was rendered in such a different way. I was a little self-conscious about whether or not I would paint or cell shade it. I think part of me feels insecure if a piece doesn't show that I know how to paint realistically or show that I know how to correctly shade and use color. I worry that people will forget that I know how to do that. They won't, <laughs> first of all, they won't. Um, this is just a different piece. It's like sometimes you make a sandwich and sometimes you make a pizza. They got different ingredients. And also, since I was on vacation at this time for the holidays, I had plenty of time to futz with it in a non-stressful way. Enough time to take breaks, walk away from it, and come back and realize, Oh wait, it looks fine! It looks fine! One thing my painting professor at school uh, used to tell us is, You have to walk away, you can't see it anymore. Um, when we've been painting something for way too long and we keep futzing with it. 
you have to walk away because you just can't see the art anymore. And that's so true. It's so real. You have to walk away, take a break, do a stretch, take a piss, you know. One thing I didn't do for the original piece was actually draw straight lines for the floor um, and draw like basically a perspective grid. I feel like it was a missed opportunity. So then I started color picking um, directly from the original screenshot and then I started shading, trying to leave the harsh dramatic shadow lines. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how I wanted to render the eyes. The eyes are a thing because when you have more sparkle in an eye, like an anime style, it makes them look cuter and you can't see the pupil as much. But like in a piece like this, where it's kind of like a, like a, a shocked, concerned expression, the pupil is so important. They'll have a character where suddenly they get upset, they lose all depth to their eyes because they suddenly, they're unhinged. Like they get sad and then their eyes just go boo. For some of the last steps of this piece, um, I used a technique that I've seen many artists do to create like that anime flavor. Um, I don't know why this works. It might be because of the way that the lines are rendered uh, in some early anime or like the blur on a TV or the cells, like the color, I don't know. I duplicate the line art layer. I take the lower layer and I put a tiny blur on it, like a Gaussian blur and set it to a linear layer, or like a linear burn layer, and like slightly adjust the tint on that lower layer. I don't know what it does or how to describe it, but it basically gives the line art like a fuller, stronger look. I don't know. Maybe it's like, it feels like a bleed a little bit. Then I added some like grit to the stones in the background. I added a noise layer to make it look like it had been processed and like went through a television. I added some more lighting effects, added some dust as if there's a big like battle happening. You you know, there's, there's some shit going down. And I believe that's it. I am extremely happy with how this piece came out. It's one of my favorite pieces from recent art that I've made. I feel really confident in it and I, I hope you all like it too. Let me know what you liked in the video. Also let me know if you've done any redraws of your own and you'd like to share them. If you made it this far in the video, you're officially cool. Yippee! Congrats. You get nothing. If you want more of my art or my silly content, you can find me at most, if not all, socials at Rebecca Roni. Um, I also stream on Twitch, and it's really fun over there. Don't forget to subscribe. My posting schedule isn't consistent. Look out. And don't forget to check out my Kofi if you want a shout out like these lovely people over here. Thank you to Nico Tandesu, Robadair, Mira Valier, Silly Wizard 97, Ed is Everywhere, and Robin Sassyfress for supporting me on Kofi. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Goodbye! <laughs>